Hi, I'm Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have a special guest. He is a fantasy writer and the author of the book The Lost War and the Peter Crown, no other than Mr. Justin Lee Anderson. Hi, thanks for having me, Daniel. Welcome to Book 101, Mr. Justin, and can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Justin Lee Anderson. Uh, as you said, I am most recently the author of The Lost War and the Bitter Crown, the first two books in the Eden Saga quadrilogy. Um, previous to that, I uh, also released a, a completely different book, the comedy fantasy uh, Carpet Diem. Um, and before that, I worked for uh, over 15 years as a professional writer and uh, editor before Carpet Diem was published. What books or authors are you currently reading or recommend? Uh, I am currently reading um, The Silver Blood Promise by um, James Logan. Um, I was lucky enough to get a, an advanced review copy of it from him, um, and I am really enjoying it. Um, another reviewer uh, on uh, Twitter, I think, uh, recommended it as something similar to, to my work um, when, I, when I put out a request because somebody had asked me for recommendations of things similar to my work, and I was struggling to come up with very many. Um, and somebody recommended this, the, James's book, The Silver Blood Promise. I think it's out um, in a few months, maybe even a month. It's, it's out soon. Um, and I am really enjoying it. It's really good. What inspired you to become an author? It's difficult. To, I, I always enjoyed writing. Um, I initially thought I was going to go into acting when I, when I finished university. Um, and so I kind of... I, I, I experimented with doing some writing while I was at university. Um, I wrote a comic that I worked on with a friend of mine who was an artist, and that didn't end up uh, working out. And then I wrote a really uh, weird, pretentious sort of postmodern thing and showed it to a professor um, at university. And he basically said, I don't really know how to give you feedback on this kind of thing, but just keep writing. <laughs> um, and uh, it was... It was uh, it was sort of inspired by the wasteland um, and uh, a little bit by some of the old. I mean, I was doing a degree in English literature, so I was reading a lot of really different, um, unusual things, and I thought I could write some mad. Uh, I think it was based it was based on the idea of a short, a selection of uh, sorry, a collection of of short stories. Um, but the, the the concept was that the the there was a narrator kind of tying all the short stories together and he was self-aware so he knew that he was a character narrating a book it was yeah. very it was very high concept and pretentious and i i wrote that and i remember saying to my mom at the time it's not going to be a bestseller and she said well why don't you write a bestseller instead <laughs> I thought, that's probably decent advice mom thanks um so I, it was a lot of things. I mean, it was it was it was the desire to tell stories. I get very, um, I find myself just uh, absorbed in in storytelling, um, whatever the medium is, whether it's reading, whether it's television, film. Um, I and I, I find myself unconsciously sort of examining the story and working out what's happening and where things are going to go. I drive my wife nuts telling her what's going to happen next, and then it happens. Uh, and she's like, you're, you're no fun to watch TV with because you just tell me what's going to happen next all the time. Um, um, but, but what I try to do with that is what, what I enjoy particularly because I do that, because I just um, I'm so aware of how storytelling works and how structure works without without like putting a name on it. I could just see how it's being done. Um, what I love is when a story surprises me. I love when a writer does something that I'm not expecting um, or does something that I, or, or a story is told in a way that I can't predict what's going to happen. And so um, telling those kind of stories became kind of, it, it was like I could sort of, I suppose it's kind of like, it's kind of like being able to see the matrix 
and then deciding to do something different with it. Um, so I wanted to write stories where people couldn't just look at it and go, oh, I know what's going to happen. I can see what's going to happen with this character. This has been foreshadowed. Um, I can see where the story is going. Um, and I wanted to write stories that didn't do that. I wanted to write stories that maybe reflected more um, uh, of of my own th of my own feelings and thoughts about the world, but also that were were more um, less less structured in the way that people have come to expect stories to be structured, I suppose, so that they were surprising and they were unusual and that they were entertaining. Can you tell us about your writing process? Oh well. Um, I don't know that I have a writing process. It's all a bit chaotic. Um, I I tend to work mostly with everything just going around in my head. Um, so I do a lot of the work in my head before I sit down at the keyboard and write anything. Um, so stuff has to really kind of percolate and, and stew in there um, for a long time before I actually sit down and write. Um, what I tend to do is I, you know, the, the, we talk about sort of, um, whether you're a, a plotter or a, a pantser, whether you have a, a complete outline of what you're going to write before you start writing, or whether you just sit down and start writing and see where it goes. And I'm somewhere in the middle of that. Um, I tend to refer to myself as a way poster because basically I tend to know the beginning and the end and then major plot points along the way. Um, and then what I do between those is I, I write between the waypoints and I try to allow what happens between the waypoints to be driven by the characters um, so that they, so that it all feels more real and more natural and so that it can, and you know, it can surprise me sometimes the story can go in directions I wasn't expecting because what I'm doing is trying to work out, well, what would these characters do now? What would this character be driven by? What, what's this character motivated to do next? Um, and the and the reactions between the characters, the the relationships between the characters, so I try to let those drive me in between the waypoints, but always knowing that I'm heading towards those waypoints and I need to hit those on the way to the end of the story. Very well said, Mister Justin. So, how do you develop your characters and plot lines? Well, um, I mean, plot lines very much as i said it's sort of the the whole the whole way posting thing um but i have a lot of so i'm i'm really interested in uh politics and and current events and sort of culture and so um in everything that i write there's usually an underlying uh theme or uh metaphor some of them more subtle than others <laughs> some of them are right there um some of them are more underlying um but I usually I write because I have things I want to say. You know, it's I, I want to tell stories and I enjoy telling stories. That that in itself is a is a reason for doing it, and it's a it's a big thing that I get out of it. Um, but uh, other than that, um, the characters. Um, so the characters for the Lost War initially were uh characters that were role played in um uh, a long standing role playing game with my friends and I and when that game finished and we stopped using the characters I wanted to do something else with them um and so initially they were each they were each very loosely based on the people who played them uh, on the on the people who played the characters but um over time just having them as i say they just kind of sit in my head and they and they stew and um, over time, they became their own thing. They became their own different uh, people and characters with their own different backgrounds. And I sat down at one point. Um, I was I was a fair bit in. It was maybe about a quarter of the way into writing the first book of The Lost War. Um, and I actually sat down at that point and went, you know, I, I haven't really firmed this up. And it was one of the rare times where I actually sat and wrote stuff down. So I, I wrote like a couple of pages of A4 on each main character about their history and their character and who they were and where they had come from and what their background was and that really helped me to not only flesh out the characters but also to um understand them myself and decide you know where they were going to go and what i was going to do with them well said mr justin so what challenges have you faced in your writing career um i think like all writers 
there is that there is that slight terror of the blank page sometimes. Um, it can be a very solitary career. You can feel like you're you're sitting in a a, a closet by yourself, sort of writing into a void, wondering if anybody's ever going to read what you're writing, wondering if it's any good. Um, you know, it's 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 an incredible career for having so many people in it who don't believe they're any good at it. Um, and I mean, I've spoken to so many authors, and this really is a consistent, there is a really consistent um, theme of people having essentially imposter syndrome of, you know, of always hitting a stage and writing a book where you're convinced that it's garbage and that it's boring and that nobody's going to like it. Um, and I had that with, I, I absolutely had that with The Bitter Crown. I mean, I got to the end of that and I thought, God is, our, you know, the, the Lost War was received really well. Um, people really liked it. I've written this sequel because of the, because of the nature of the way The Lost War ended. There was, I couldn't just, you know, do a, do the, a similar book again. The, the Lost War is a very, is a, is a pretty unique book um, in terms of its structure and the way it ends. So um, I couldn't just do the same thing again. I did something different. It's much more character driven than the, the Lost War was. And I was worried um, whether people would like it. Um, uh, pleasantly, uh, what I've been hearing is that they do. Um, and that the the feedback has been great. I've, I've had people telling me that they they think it's even better than the first book, which is amazing because I was convinced that people were going to find it boring and hate it. Um, so that's kind of it, there's it's the lack of it's the lack of immediate feedback. You know, it takes a long time to write a book, and in all that time, you're probably not getting an awful lot of feedback on whether or not it's any good or not. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest challenge is is overcoming that and writing anyway. Mr. Justin, how do you handle writer's block? Ah, well, I actually have a I actually have a proper uh, uh, um, answer for that because I have a whole system. So what I do is, um, and it's very much based on what I was saying about having being driven by the characters. So if I get to a point where I'm not sure what happens next, I will sit down with a notebook and um, write down each of the main characters, and I will leave about four lines underneath them. And then for each one. I will write uh, where they are um, uh, in the in the world, in the story, you know, what their current situation is. Um, and then the next three things are, are what help me work this out. So I write, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? And then based on all of that, what are they motivated to do next? And once I know what each character is motivated to do next, it helps me to see where the story has to go next. Because if, you know, if one character is absolutely determined that they have to do something, then we either have to do that or there has to be an explanation for why we're not doing that. There has to be some conflict. There has to be, you know, maybe another character is absolutely determined of doing something else. Um, and, and that is always what gets me, it's always what shows me where we need to go next in terms of the, the story. Um, if I feel like I'm kind of stuck. So I think the the mistake a lot of writers make, um, and it's one I made in the past as well, is when you're stuck thinking about what's going to happen next, you concentrate on the plot. You think, oh, plot-wise, what should happen next? And if you actually focus on the characters instead, the characters will tell you where the plot needs to go next. What authors or books have influenced your writing? So, so many. Um uh, as a kid growing up, um, I read a lot of fantasy and a lot of mystery, basically, um, which is why I've ended up writing fantasy mystery. Um, but uh, one of the one of the first authors that I read a load of stuff by um, is Piers Anthony. When I was about 12 years old, I picked up a spell for Chameleon um, and loved it and read through all his Xanth books and, and just read almost him exclusively through my teenage years. Um uh, with the exception of a few other guys like um, uh, Robert Zelazny and a little bit of Terry Brooks. Um, but I mostly just tore my way through Piers Anthony, anything I could get my hands on. Um, but as I've become older and the, 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 the authors that have had more of an impact on me and my style for different reasons are people like um, Neil Gaiman. I love Neil Gaiman. His Sandman series was amazing. Uh, his Sandman series was probably a lot to do with why I first tried to write comics and and i suppose actually why i'd still quite like to like write comics 
Um, he's an incredible writer. Um, and Joe Abercrombie definitely got me back into fantasy as an adult. Um, his uh, um, First Law series is, is incredible, and I just completely absorbed me. I didn't, it, that, that sort of grim dark vibe was a whole different thing to anything I'd ever read in fantasy before, and it really dragged me in and engaged me. Um, and there are others like, you know, Patrick Rothfuss's fra- uh, prose is absolutely beautiful. Um, I love uh, some authors that I'm lucky enough to get to know, like Ed McDonald and Anna Stevens. They've both written trilogies that I adore and um, aspire to to um, come up to those standards in some ways. Um, who else? Uh, Mystery-wise, people like Joe Nesbo, Stig Larsson. Um, uh, I like a, I like that kind of Scandi noir style mystery thriller, um, and that's definitely had an impact on me from that perspective. Comedy wise, the likes of Tom Holt and Jasper Ford, um, definitely you know big influences. Um, and I tend to read those whatever I'm writing at the time. I tend to read something in the in the genre that I'm writing in. Um, so uh, I haven't read much comedy for a while because I haven't been writing it. Um, but that, that's a selection. And there are more. There are people like, you know, um, Aaron Sorkin, you know, who, who writes for TV. But Aaron Sorkin's dialogue is is incredible and trying to, um, you know, aspire to produce something even vaguely in the ballpark of his standard of, of dialogue definitely is is something that drives me. Interesting arrays of authors, uh, Mr. Justin. But before we go on, I want to shout out my ranking tops in the last 30 days. Because in Bhutan, I got number six on the Apple chart, Cameroon at number 19, Jamaica at number 27, Malawi at number 22, Cambodia at 31, Taiwan at 34, Malaysia at 66, Japan at 70. Thailand at 97, and a lot more. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writer all over the world like Mr. Justin Lee Anderson. So, Mr. Lee, let's talk about The Lost War and The Bitter Crown. How do you approach research for these books? Um, so the, the bulk of the research that I did for these books was based on Edinburgh's history because um, the country of Eden, um, which uh, the, the books are set in, is based on Edinburgh, my hometown. So um, what I did was a lot of research into the history. I mean, I already knew a fair bit about it. I, um, one of the jobs I had in my, in my old career was uh, I wrote a um, visitor's guide to Edinburgh for a while. Um, so I knew a fair bit about the history. There's a lot of dark history to Edinburgh. There's a lot of um, mythology around ghosts and hauntings in Edinburgh. So I knew a fair bit already, but um, I went and did a lot of looking into particularly the the etymology of some of the place names around the, the city. Um, and that fed into the world building and it also fed into some of the story building as well. So the example I always give is... Um, there's a little area that's technically just outside Edinburgh called Balerno. And uh, that comes from the Gaelic, I, I, and my, my Gaelic pronunciation is terrible, but it comes from the Gaelic phrase, um, Baileonich, which means place of the hawthorns. Um, and uh, hawthorns produce white flowers on thorny stems. And I knew that I wanted to have a uh, religious order of holy knights who were trained to fight demons. And so Bailernic became the home of the Order of the White Thorns. Um, and the, you know, the Hawthorn bushes are what inspired their name as well. Um, so that's sort of a direct, you know, bit of world building that came from looking into the history of, of that place name and the, the etymology of that place name. And there's there's loads of others. There's there's a lot of others across the the country of Eden that were inspired directly by um, the etymology of those place names. Can you share a memorable moment from your writing career uh, for both doing The Lost War and The Bitter Crown? A memorable moment from uh, The Lost War um, would definitely have been when it won the uh, SPFBO, the self-published fantasy blog-off competition in 2020-2021. Uh, um, so uh, I had I had originally entered Carpe Diem, my first book, into that competition a few years before and went out in the first round. Um, 
Uh, and just just to explain what it is, um, 300, 300 fantasy books are entered into this competition. Um, they are split up amongst 10 different uh, blogs, fantasy blogs. Um, they're whittled down to semi-finalists and then ultimately to 10 finalists. And then over the course of six months, all of the blogs review all of the finalists and then come up with a winner. Um, so in a, a few years before I had entered Carpe Diem, went out within a month of being in the competition. I was I was one of the first books cut from it. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that was, that was disappointing, but that was just the nature of the competition. Um, so I entered the Lost War a few years later. Um, thinking you know let's see if this does any any better um and then it went to my to my delight and surprise it went through to the the finals and then won it um which was exactly what led to me getting an agent which is what led to me getting the the deal that i have with with orbit for the eden saga series so um that was a hugely memorable moment when i when i won that i i, I specifically remember when i got put through to the finals um being just delighted and surprised and then spending that sort of six months getting to know the other finalists um we had a discord that we all chatted in um and that was that was amazing um and with the bitter crown a memorable moment with the bitter crown um b i think maybe because i did the because i recorded the audiobook myself for the bitter crown i think maybe when the first sort of reaction started coming in from people and they were very positive um, to my to my narrating the audiobook. I I was that I think that was what I was most nervous about on the whole thing of releasing that book. I was ner- you know it's the it's the second book in a series, so I was nervous about whether people would like it. So seeing reviews come in and being good was immediately a really nice thing. But I think <laughs> the one that actually pleased me the most and surprised me the most was when reviews of my actual narrating were were really positive and really really strong because that was. Uh, something I've never done before and I was very nervous about it and I'm I'm delighted that with the responses I congratulations to all your achievement for your two books and Mr. Justin so what advice do you have for aspiring writers out there um uh, initially uh two bits of advice the first is um believe that you can do it Believe in yourself that you can not only write this book and finish this book and write a book that you want to read. That's the other. Sorry, I'm going to go on. This will go on tangents. Write the book that you want to read. Don't try to write something that you think people want to read. Write a book that you're excited about because you will write a better book for that. Believe that you can do it. Believe that you can finish it. Believe that you can get published because that held me back for probably 15, 20 years. I just didn't believe that I could do it. And so I didn't. Um, and it was a long time before I finally did believe I could do it and it all worked out very nicely. So I wish I had believed, you know, when I was, I wish I had believed when I was 20 that I could do what I did when I was 40. Um, and the final thing, the most important thing is, um, the first thing you have to do before you consider anything else, the first thing you have to do is write a good book and finish it, finish the book because that is your starting point. Before you start thinking about how you're going to do covers or editing or anything else, don't start fretting about that. Your first focus and your first job is finish a good book and then look into everything else. But that's step one. Yes, indeed, people. Finish a good book and share to the world. What an Excellent advice, Mr. Justin. So how did you balance writing with the other aspect of your life when you were writing The Lost War and The Bitter Crown? Um, uh, well, I'm lucky enough to be able to write full time. Um, so um, I have a lot more freedom than, than you know, 90, 99% of writers who um, have to work full time and fit in writing around that. Um, I did... I did do that initially um, with my first book, Carpet DM, and um, it took me a very, very long time because um, it takes you, you need a lot of energy and creativity to to write, and um, uh, any career that that draws on all that energy and all that creativity is going to make that harder because you only have so many resources. Um, for me, as I say, I'm I'm in a very lucky position. Um, I don't have another job I have to do. I'm able to write full time. 
and so um it's a lot easier for me now i just have to wrangle my brain <laughs> and make my brain <laughs> and make my brain work what i want it to work instead of deciding that it's going to be a butterfly and go off and, and think about other things instead yes indeed so what are some themes or topics that you are passionate about exploring in your writing oh so many um, as I say, I'm very interested in, in politics and uh, current events and culture. Um, I, uh, I, I'm particularly interested in looking at things like um, how people are uh, manipulated to form opinions, um, how, how politicians um, manipulate their populations to get them to either you know, vote for them or support them or to believe what they want them to believe. Um, I, uh, I, truth in and of itself. I mean, the whole the whole problem we have in the world at the moment of of truth and not actually being able to agree on what objective truth is. Um, that is a big uh, issue that I I'm passionate about uh, trying to figure out how we fix that because it's very difficult to have a discussion about anything if you can't even agree on objective truth. Um, so uh, everything like uh, everything around that, um, I'm interested in things like equality and uh, prejudice and discrimination um, and how they happen and the effects that they have on people's lives. Um, uh, but, you know, those, those are sort of high level things, but it, really anything that comes under the heading of you know, culture and, and, and politics um, are things that I'm I'm interested in exploring and, and writing about. Looking forward for the next level of your writing, Mr. Justin. But before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our fourth season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chefs in one of the five-star restaurants in downtown Toronto. Please do listen to our latest episode. We talk about our Food 101 Volume 12 Italian Cuisine, people. So please do listen to that. And our books are out, not only one, but 13 volumes, people. Food 101 Volume 1 Basics until 13 is only the books that you need how to create a delicious food. Available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. So, Mr. Justin, what are your short-term and long-term goals in writing? Oh, my short-term goal is to finish book three in this series. <laughs> I'm writing <laughs> it at the moment, and I have to finish it. So that's my short-term goal. Uh, my long-term goal is just to be able to keep doing this full-time, is to keep being able to do this as a career. Um, I'd, I'd love it to be wildly successful, but I have to admit that I'm, I'm very happy to be in the position I'm in um, at the moment, and if I can continue in this position, I will be pretty happy. I just need to keep writing books that uh, that do well, I guess. Good luck for your goal, Sir Justin. And can you please invite our listeners to support your two books? Uh, yes, please do. <laughs> please, you can find <laughs> you'll find them. Uh, they are available uh, from. Uh, I mean, any any. English language bookstore. Unfortunately, it's only available in English at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want them available in another language, please go and harass publishers in, the, the, in your native language and uh, ask them to, to pick up the books and, and publish them in your language too. Yes, people, let's support The Lost War and The Bitter Crown because if you support Mr. Justin, more, more, more fantasy novel to come. Mr. Justin, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Morning, people. See you soon.